The oceans cover about two-thirds of the Earth's surface. From earliest history, men have fished in them, navigated over them, and been stirred by their moves. But only over the last generation or so have we really begun to explore their depth. One of the most powerful aids in this is acoustic energy. Sound travels in seawater at one and a half kilometers per second. It is the only form of energy that will radiate for thousands of kilometers. With it, the oceanographer can gather information from the bottom of the deepest ocean and control scientific instruments beyond the range of the deepest diver. Ships and most modern yachts are fitted with a simplified version of the oldest of the oceanographer's acoustic instruments, the echo sounder. They use it to avoid going aground in shallow waters. The oceanographers use it to chart accurately the depths of the sea. And with the latest crystal-controlled instruments, they can detect a two-meter bump on the seabed 6,000 meters below. It works like this. A pencil beam of sound pulses is transmitted vertically downwards beneath the ship. The returning echo is picked up by hydrophones, a kind of microphone, converted into an electrical pulse and recorded on electrosensitive paper. The depth of the sea is calculated from the time taken for the sound to travel from the ship to the seabed and back. It's the most accurate method there is of charting depth, although it's rarely simple because fake echoes are often bounced back from even quite small shoals of fish. In fact, echo sounders are now used by nearly all fishermen. Echo sounding tells us about the surface of the seabed. If we want to learn what is under it, we use reflection seismics. This diagram shows what happens. A survey ship steams along a carefully set course and lets off a series of explosions. The sound waves travel through the sea and the different layers of rock under it. The surface of each layer, depending on what it is, reflects back all or some of the sound as an echo. The echoes are picked up by a number of hydrophones towed by the ship just under the sea surface. All the electrical signals from the hydrophones are fed to a central recorder in the ship. From records like these, a skilled geologist can build up a detailed picture of the thickness and even the nature of the rocks underlying the sea floor. Through this technique, sound has been used on the shallow continental shelves to locate places where oil or gas might be found. Already, over a sixth of the world's oil and a twentieth of its natural gas come from offshore wells. This is the Discovery, Britain's most sophisticated research ship. She is a floating laboratory used by scientists of the National Institute of Oceanography. The Institute has developed a better net for biologists to use for catching samples of marine life. The old nets were not exact enough for the biologists because they were open at the front all the time, letting in samples as they went down into the sea and were raised again. No one could say for sure which depths each kind of creature came from. The new nets are closed, ready to be let down into the sea. When they get to the depth set by the biologists, a sound signal will cause them to open to take samples at that depth, and then another will make them close. A low-powered transmitter, or pinger, at the top of the net sends out a signal that is picked up on a hydrophone. It shows the net has reached the right depth. The biologist in the ship sends a command signal to release the lower of the two bars of each net. They fall under their own weight down the guide rails. With the net open, the sampling run can begin. At the end of the run, the biologist sets off another sound signal which releases the second bars, closing the nets again for hoisting. This use of sound for the remote control of the nets is helping the marine biologists to get more information about where and what kind of creatures live in the sea. Their interest in fishes and other marine life is not purely scientific. Food from the sea is very important, and an accurate knowledge of marine populations 
is vital to knowing how we can preserve and benefit from this valuable source. By using sound signals, the scientists can control research instruments at depths far beyond the reach of divers, like remotely controlled vehicles to explore the seabed, or instruments to gather information about ocean currents and tidal flows. Several small battery-operated current meters attached to a long wire rope and each with a miniature tape recorder can now be dropped almost anywhere in the oceans of the world. Each line of meters is kept in position by an anchor. The line also carries a small acoustic transmitter and a listening device. It is held vertical by a large sealed buoy several hundred meters below the surface and it can be left for six months or even longer, steadily recording information about the strength and direction of the ocean currents at various depths. When the survey ship returns, it sends out an acoustic command to trigger off the transmitter. And then, once it has located the position of the line, it sends a second signal to break a retaining bolt and the whole assembly floats to the surface with data that would take years to collect by any other method and which will lead to a much more accurate charting of the movements of the deep oceans. Apart from a few areas off the continental shelves, the nature of the ocean's floors is almost completely unknown. But the whole process of mapping large areas in detail has been made possible by the development of a technique known as side-scan sonar, which uses sound almost as if it were light to illuminate the seabed. The ship navigates a fixed course and sends out a beam of sound in a series of pulses. The beam is very narrow in one aspect and fan-shaped in the other. Each pulse reaches the sea floor and is reflected back first from beneath the ship, then from slightly further out, and then progressively further away until it gets beyond the instrument's range. The returning echoes are picked up and recorded, and then the next pulse is sent out and the whole cycle is repeated many times over as the ship steams along. The sound beam is echoed from surfaces facing the ship, just as light would be reflected. Obstructions in the way of the beam cause acoustic shadows, from which no echoes return and nothing is recorded. The recorder in the ship slowly builds up a map-like picture of the seabed showing features of a broad area of the sea floor several kilometers wide. Uh, the latest side scan device developed by the National Institute of Oceanography and known affectionately as Gloria, short for Geological Long Range Inclined Aztec, has a range of fully 22 kilometers and is capable of mapping the floors of the deepest oceans. She's a 10-meter fiberglass submersible and is flooded so she can be towed at about 120 meters down to get below the surface temperature barrier and beyond the ship's noise and the surface movements of the sea. To get good results during a surveying run, Gloria has to be kept on a straight line and must not turn more than half a degree either way from this. The instrument produces remarkable pictures of the sea floor showing up major geological features in striking detail, such as this submerged volcano in the Mediterranean Sea, these rock formations at the bottom of the Turanian Sea, and this undersea canyon off Capri. With its power to carry out large-scale surveys, Gloria is bringing to scientists some of the excitement felt by early explorers traveling in unknown places. As they probed and mapped the Earth's surface, so the oceanographers can now explore the dark and silent depths of the oceans. Nobody yet knows what they may find. One thing is certain. Using sound in the sea is helping us to learn more about our own planet. The oceans will rival outer space as a major focus of scientific interest.